Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. I'm going to defer to Greg to do the introduction of our guest here. Greg, please go ahead. Well, the guest is none other than my boss and partner here at Premier Lighting, Angie Cook. And we're going to dive into, I don't know exactly what we're going to talk about today, but Mike and I are going to figure that out as we go and kind of the history of Premier Lighting, the company I work for and with, and we'll get into it. But before we do... You got to go, you got to keep it easy. Always keep it easy, Greg. Got to go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com. The easy folks, light made easy. The retrofit and I tell kings, you what, come on. Yeah, we talk, we talk about their product all the time, but as a company, why, why Premier Lighting does business with them is because they do make it easy and they do the right thing. They, they look at, you know, like what is the right product that you need? What's the right price that you need? What's the right availability? They have everything. They have it all ready for you. I had a unique situation come up the other day where I said, I need this. And they said, all right. Two days later, it's in development. And now we've got a unique product solution that once it's out, we we'll maybe can promote it. But it's not out yet, so be ready. But that's the type of company Keystone is. So you got to keep it easy with Keystone. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com. That's KeystoneTech.com. And, of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Get educated. Get associated. Come on down. We have a convention coming up. In November, I'm hoping to get there somehow, some way. Um, but you should go for sure. And so you do that by going to NAILD.org. Check it out. But for right now, welcome to the show, finally, Angie. Thank you. I know you've been Thanks hiding from me. us. You've been dodging us. We've been trying I, to get you on I, the show. I, Here yep, you are. I, I don't, I've got stage fright. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I get it. <laughs> she's she's forty feet away from me at all times, and I'm recording this stuff, by the way. So <laughs> that's how, how elusive she is. Let's start. Yes. Let's start at the beginning. So you started Premier Lighting. Did you have a partner in the beginning? Did you start the business from scratch? Tell us the 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 origin story. The origin story is I worked for a lighting company. Started there when I was just I think barely twenty one years old. Worked there for five years, or just under five anyway, and we were a breakaway from a different lighting company. And yes, I had a, a business partner back then that was a sales manager at the time. We left together with a group of people. And in the beginning stages of Premier Lighting, you guys were just lamp and ballast sales like most lighting distributors. Well, pretty much. We were doing projects at the time, but they weren't, you know, it was basically the T12 business and energy saving was out there. It wasn't XL Energy for us. It was NSP at the time. Okay. And real quick, just the, the, the breakaway story. I know it, but, you know, people might ask, why did you break away without, you know, hurting feelings or whatever might happen from it? It's right. 30 years ago. Yep. But 30 years ago. Um, basically, difference, differing management uh, styles, I would maybe say. Financial problems. Uh, at the other company, just time to do it different. What was your role there? Uh, well, at the time when we left, I was basically office manager, business manager. Started out answering the phones, okay. so worked my way worked my way up very fast. And so. you, so you started off answer, um, answering phones, and you worked your way up to office manager, and then you decided to break away and embark yep. on your own. You took the team, some of the team with you, and you started Premier Lighting. And Correct. what was that like? Was it scary? Was it, nah, and this is no problem? Uh, I think I was pretty young, so I was probably too young to, to get real scared. Um, didn't have a lot at the time, so I didn't have a lot to lose. Everything to gain. Um, but yeah, it was, it was something else. It was an experience to go from thinking you had, you know, a customer base to basically getting a new phone number and... Um, Starting from scratch, really. You know, so. it's, it's, it's interesting that um, the entrepreneurial story. So, you, you know, you, when people think, when you, you say entrepreneur nowadays, Greg, or business owner, you th people think of like Silicon Valley startups. You know, they think of Elon Musk or, you know, Zuckerberg or one of these cats. But that's not really, those aren't really entrepreneurs. They're kind of like um, venture capital exploiters. You know what I mean? Right. They don't really have much of their own skin in the game. They're not worried about paying their mortgage, you know, this kind of thing. It's not, it's not really what, that's a different thing. Um, 
And I've always advised people that if you want to become an entrepreneur, you should do so as soon as possible in your life, as young as possible. And the older you get, the less likely you are to ever be willing to take that risk. And so it's interesting that you started young, I started young, and Greg started young. And most of the people that I know that have become business owners have started really young. What were the advantages to that for you specifically? Advantages to starting, starting young or to yeah. starting premier? So starting well, young I, as an I, entrepreneur. Yep. Um, well, I think basically it gave me a path. I was able to write my own story, you know, start from nothing and, and go the way I wanted to go at life, work the way I wanted to work. Um, college didn't pan out and it, it was just work hard and make it happen. When we started, I, I literally, we didn't take paychecks for almost three years. Paid daycare, paid gas, paid obvious expenses. You know, took enough to do that, um, but worked hard. So I think what made it work is just, you know, opportunity. You give yourself your own opportunity to make it happen. A little of the origin, too. So when you, you broke off, you guys, how did you name the company? You've told me a little bit, but nobody else knows. So, <laughs> uh, Well, go back and remember now, but we were back and forth, back and forth. John, my partner at the time, wanted to name it Apple Lighting. Um, to be at the beginning of the alphabet. And I just didn't like the word Apple. I liked Premier better because it meant we were good. But imagine, imagine had we picked Apple. Yeah, I wonder what that, what, what would it, I wonder what that would have looked like. Apple lighting. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't no. like Apple either. I think it's a bad I don't name. either. But you know, we've got all of our Apple products and you know, sure, whatever. Could have wrote, could have wrote that one home. Um, so then yeah. in the be, in the beginning, were you guys doing, um, I remember in the 90s and 80s, um, the long life business was quite popular. Did you guys ever dabble in long life? Uh, well, absolutely. It's kind of the way we started, but we dabbled in it differently. We, Our mojo or our motto was to go hire all the DuroTest sales reps and LDI and Fargo maintenance engineering, all the long life uh, independent reps because they were trained by somebody else. They knew lighting. They know, knew how to go in and get it done. And we just offered a little cheaper, you know, we were there lower priced. If they didn't want the gold end caps, we offered the <laughs> regular end caps, <laughs> but we could still do the warranty. And, you know, so we did a long life, We, but we didn't market it as heavy as the real long life players. And the, that, that company name was Radiant Lighting. And was it that when you first started uh, Premier, was it Radiant Lighting? It was. So Radiant Lamp. Um, or Lamp. Was, yep. Yep. They were around. We had trouble getting set up with them at first because we were the breakaway. We had to prove ourselves. We had to buy it from other smaller distributors in the area for a while. But yeah, Radiant Lamp was, was it. They were a arm of Philips at the time. And so we sold Long Life Radiant Lamp, not Long Life Durotest style. So the, the, um, there was a time uh, in lighting, and I think a lot of people, the LED people now, have no conception of this, okay? But where yep. you could go out and write three or four orders a day and feed your family. Exactly, yep. Like just selling do boxes it, of light bulbs. Just, yep, to very small businesses and small towns and make your, make your circle through the towns and do it. Yeah. Yep. One of our, my dad still has two guys that have worked for him for over 45 years. I'm not kidding you. And uh, one of them is named uh, Tony Mora, Tony the Tiger. And he keeps a hammer in his truck. He's got to break some light bulbs out of his customer's warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah. He, he walks in with it. Yeah. He literally walks yeah. in with a hammer. And he's like, do I have to break any lights yeah. in here? I need an order. So there was a different yeah. business then. Um, how yeah. much, so... Before we get into that partnership and all that, do you yeah. think like the lighting business now, and a lot of people don't like long life. I don't think they understood it really, what the customer wanted from it um, yeah. and what the sales proposition was. Do you think the lighting industry could return to some of the first principles of long life now? Boy, um, I don't know. I think you'd have to change the way they perceive it. Like you said, um, long life back then was pay a hefty price, you got a gift usually, yep. you know, the, 
the buyer Radio. would get a little co cooler flash flashlight. <laughs> yeah. And those days are over. Um, I think now long life means hours. People would rather hear, I think, how many hours it's going to last. Could we get back to it where you're selling longer life LED? I don't know. I don't think so. <clears throat> I'm not talking about that specifically, but the principle of oh. it. The idea, like every order came with a gift. It was so funny how that was. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we can go back to those days. I, I wonder, like, at that time, like, you know, with cal fancy calculators, people were giving away TVs with an order and stuff like that. I mean, how, how did they get away with that? I don't even, I, I don't, I, I don't, is it wrong? You think it's wrong? I, I, I think people, it is wrong. Yeah. Purchasing people had to start signing something that they wouldn't accept gifts and yeah. Yeah. Wild uh, times. Okay. It's so like our cre credit ahead. card points. It's kind of like credit card points. Rewards. That's a great point. You know what's so funny about that is like people go into debt to get points. That's so funny how that how that works. They actually do that. They don't pay. They're like, oh, I'm getting points though. It's like, no, you're going into debt actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, yeah. it's a high interest rate there. You want to stay out of that? Yeah. That's a good observation, okay. Angie. Tell me a little bit about the transition when the business, because it's before LED that the, the business started to morph into like a more of a project-based business. When yeah. did that start for Premier Lighting? What, what year around did you start to see that people wanted to move to T8s as wholesale rather than one at a time or whatever? I would probably say right right around 1993. Okay. Uh, 90, 95 was our peak of T8, from T12 to T8. Hmm. And That's then when we were pushing. When you were pushing it, eh? And yep. then when did the high bay stuff start? When metal halide started to come down and you started to put up the high bay fluorescence? Uh, Greg, that was probably by the time you were around or it was just starting, right? So probably early two, 2007, maybe? Yeah, yeah, right around. I started in yeah. uh, five, five or six, but yeah, five. it was right okay. around that time yeah. and we started figuring it out. Yeah. We're, we're going to get to the VP yeah. in a second. Don't worry. He's going <laughs> to come, he's gonna come <laughs> into the show here in a second. Um, so, and then you, so you, your partner's John. And then yep. how does that relationship end and, and that you, you know you're looking for another partner? Uh, actually, he passed away. And okay. um, yeah. And Greg's father was actually my accountant. And he introduced me to his little son. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so, just a kid at the time. <laughs> okay. So how old, how old were you, Greg, when, when, you, when you started at Premier? 26, I think. Is it twenty five or twenty six? I got to do the math. Twenty five, twenty six. Yeah. 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 Maybe so twenty five. Yeah. You have an established business. It's running. You're looking for yep. sales help. You're kind of looking for someone that has management material, and that that's management material, and you want to bring them in. Did you hire Greg with the idea that he was going to become a partner, or did you just hire him to be to come on board as a as an employee? Uh, partnership was always kind of the back was part of the idea, um, but first we had to you know, see if it was going to work. And I actually don't even know if I thought of him as management material. I think it was more like sales, sales, you know, that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. um, turned out, yeah, that it was more than sales, but I knew almost immediately that it was going to work, even though he didn't know what a light bulb was. Why is that? So, Tell me why you knew it was going to work. Uh, I have seen over 30 years, you can imagine, the amount of sales reps that come through a door. Actually, I made a list last week knowing we were, knowing we were going into this and I came up with 50 uh, sales people over, over the 30 years that we've had um, and you just know the ones that are going to make it and you know it right away if you are kind of wandering down the road you know six months in even it's it's pretty obvious but he had the uh, I think the attack spirit the want to go out and get the sale it was getting the sale I think more than initially knowing the product he had to know the product to make it happen but when someone is so driven to get a sale that's where it's at and greg when you when you came to work for premiere what did you think of angie and the business and all that tell me you know you you, you came in with the idea of becoming a partner but what happened when you got there i mean the potential idea we didn't know but i, re I remember my dad 
calling me. You know, I, I was talking to him. I was actually going through a time where I wanted to do something different. You know, I got my marketing degree and I did marketing for a company and I did sales for a little bit. And I was like, all right, I like the sales angle, but I also like the ability or I maybe want the capability to own a business someday. And kind of how it came about, you know, the thought process was I was in Alaska and my aunt had a physical therapy clinic. And I'm like, you know, this is cool. Maybe I can do that. I don't have any real trade skill or anything other than my marketing background, which is very broad. Maybe I get into physical therapy and, and start a clinic or something like that. So that was kind of the, the mindset I had. And um, I got to the point where I actually quit my job and went back to school to get all my science background, which I didn't have the chemistry and all that. Um, and then right around that same time as my dad was called and he said, hey, one of my clients is um, looking for somebody to help with sales. And you know, he said, a yeah, real, real great person, someone that I think you'd get along with and, and a company that has real good potential. And I'm like, okay, what, what are we doing? And he's like, selling lighting. I'm like, lighting? You don't sell light bulb. Like, what do you mean lighting? <laughs> and, and so I had, to, I had to really like dive into it and say, what the hell? Like people sell light bulbs? I thought you just buy them at a store or whatever. I didn't know anything. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. And, and he said, then, you know, there's potential for growth down the road and something that might work out. And, you know, what does it hurt while you're, going to school, going back a little bit to school, work part-time and do that. And so then I called Angie. I remember calling her. It was right around 4th of July, I remember, because I was at my in-law's cabin. I was on the dock and I was talking to her. And uh, and she said, yeah, why don't you come in, you know, whatever, next week or whatever it was. So it was like mid-July of either 05 or 06. Someday I'll, I'll remember yeah. or look back. Um, <clears throat> and then I met with her and we went through the business and, you know, kind of diving into what they what they did, and I started looking at it like, well, yeah, there's there's potential there, and something I can try. I've never done anything like this before, so um, let's try it. That's how it came about. So, was that an atypical interview for you, Angie, when you were interviewing Greg? Was it different than other interviews you had done with people for sales positions and stuff in the past? Um, well, it was pretty informal. I would say it was probably. The same, but I think because I knew his dad and we knew what we were going into, it was just kind of like, yeah, let's give this a try. He mm -hmm. came on as a straight commission uh, mm -hmm. rep, just like anybody else would have. That's hilarious. So, My dad did the same yeah. thing to me. <laughs> so he brought started a you at nothing. Hundred percent commission. Gave you, gave you nothing. Yep. <laughs> nothing. Right. Hundred yeah. percent commission. Go sell, boy. Go use your own. Go use your own gas, your own car, and yeah. bring me an order. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, bring us an order. I brought my I brought an order on my first day, but um, I had no. Idea. There's something about uh, an um. There's something to um. Uh, somebody that's motivated, knows nothing, and is out there trying that I think is very endearing to some people. You know that yeah. uh, that helps you get orders that that you would never get even if you were like the, an expert. There was someone's like, okay, I'm gonna give this guy a shot. He's obviously working hard or whatever. So you're so you're sitting there with Greg. When did you know that yeah. you wanted to become when you when you decide you when you wanted to open the door to partnership, when did that start? Um, boy, that's a long time ago to even remember. Do you recall? Let me think. Um, I would say it was well, at least I, six months. Yeah, yeah, it was think? probably about six months because I started, you know, in in that whatever July time frame, and I, and I started going back to school in August. So I do. Yeah. I think I was doing afternoon or night school, and I was working during the day, you know, four hours a time, whatever it might be, and then. Uh, school sucked and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like going back and you know I was 25 or whatever and everybody else was 18 I was going to the community college to do chemistry and stuff I don't like at all you know and and all those science classes and and then um I was like well I, I, I like selling the light bulbs you know I, I, I kind of want to do that instead and I just started talking to Angie about it over time and and then you know that's it probably started in yeah, November December time frame and then yeah. I didn't, I don't think I went back to school second semester. I think I barely finished that first semester, December, mm -hmm. and then starting January, I came on full-time, still in sales with the idea that we'd revisit again in, I think, six months, something like that. Yep. So we, we kind of yep. did it, yeah, staged like that. So you guys came together um, yep. and you decided to build a business together. And I know that it's grown a lot that you and Greg, you know, sometimes one plus one is two, sometimes one beside one is 11. And I think we're talking about one of those scenarios where you, you guys came together. What about the, what is it about the partnership with Greg and you do that you think is so magical? 
Uh, well, I think the best thing about our partnership really is that we are in complete different sides of the business. He can do the sales, knows the product, um, runs that side of it, and I can do what I do. And um, we don't we don't get in each other's way. I guess would be the best way. Sounds like a good marriage too, actually. But um, the uh, <laughs> what is it that you do? Uh, I would I do all the inside processes, management, financial. You do the details invoicing. invoicing? Well, I don't actually do the invoicing, but at one time I did the invoicing. Yes, oversee. I oversee the I oversee the entire thing. Yep. Mm. How we how every detail goes. And Greg, you don't care much for details, do you? I try to avoid them if possible. <laughs> Just make sure, make sure my audit has accounts right, kind of, and right. You know, that kind of thing. And sales yep. workout. I would say he's detail avoidant. It's probably a personality type. Oh, for sure yeah. it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a big picture person. I think Greg is probably the same way. Um, yeah. Now, so that then the business starts to transform around 2008. We met at the convention in 2007, Greg, and I was telling you about high bay retrofits. I don't think it had, had the incentives were there yet in Minnesota for that as yet, or it was they, coming on. They were just starting, but it was something I had no no real idea. And I mean, I think high bays might have been around, but as far as the, the growth of them, we, we were a little behind on it. Uh, from the the rest of the market, but I remember getting uh, training from a company, a manufacturer that then sold a couple times over, and they're gone now. Um, but that's how uh, we started getting into high base. It was probably right around seven, I think. Yeah, if it's round, it has to come down. Those kind of things were you know mm -hmm. flying around nailed conventions at the time. Um, so you guys started doing projects. Then we get into LED. How how much has changed, Angie, from your pr perspective? over from the original, you know, selling, you know, long life into fluorescent projects now into LED. What's the major differences from you on the, on your side of the business from the invoicing side? Is it less invoices to customers? Not as often when you do a project, you're done with them and that's unfamiliar for you. What is the biggest difference? Uh, I think, the pro I, actually, I think the projects are easier to manage LED. Uh, we're purchasing less products per order. I think if we went back and looked um, I think the invoicing though is kind of the same. The process is still the same. You're purchasing something. There's definitely more technical now though. And yeah, when you close the order, we're less likely to go back and, and get more, more business. Do you miss you know, the it's going to take a while. Yeah. Do you miss the days of like those customers that would order three, four times a month and you were just invoicing and invoicing and invoicing the same customer? And you had this habit of calling them on the 15th of the month to get out, send them their statements. And that's largely right. gone in some ways. And it's like it's, it used to be the biggest part of the business in the old days. But Right. We still have a fair number of it. I wouldn't say. I mean, it's it's definitely down. Probably, what, 30% maybe? Mm. It used to be 40 that was um, of our sales. 30% maybe? The reorder. 30% or, yeah, supply yeah. we call it, and 70% yeah. project-based. project yeah. That's revenue yeah. based. Like that's the revenue projection of it. Thirty mm -hmm. percent of revenue is MRO, or as we call it. Yeah, oh, great. Thirty to forty. You need a lighting guy, bud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So you now you've been in the business for thirty years. Yep. Thirty years. Okay. Thirty years. It's a long time. Yep. Yeah. Go uh, ahead. Go I ahead. was going to say one thing. I was just thinking on the fluorescent and. When if it was an easier project or or uh, or LED in terms of invoicing and and yeah, when you think about fluorescent, what we used to have to do was choose a ballast, choose a ballast factor, choose a lamp, choose a lamp wattage, choose a color, uh, maybe a reflector, you know, maybe all this other stuff. And so yeah, all those different components. Now a lot of the stuff you know we do at least is type B LED, cut everything else out. You get a tube. Voice <laughs> too, so <laughs> so yeah. To that point, it's just something that kind of hit me. So I thought that was funny, but it's true. So, yeah, yeah. Remember all the kits, the, the, the retrofit kits, and all that. Oh, God. Yeah, and retrofits, sockets. Oh, yeah, you know, so. yeah. <laughs> Crazy times. One thing though, going back to that, the fixtures are a lot. Um, every fixture is different. And that kind of is difficult. You know, you're not reordering true. the same product code time and time again. We're creating yeah, we new items. Every order. High day. 698 yeah. high bay gripples and, and tubes. That, that was a lot of the fluorescent orders. Yeah, it's it's true. You're, you, we spend a lot of time creating item codes in our system. 
a yeah. lot. And it's yeah. like, and you'll get like an email from a manufacturer. Here's our new codes. It's just like, oh God. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're now 30 years in the business. What lessons on, you know, are you like, are you thinking of exiting the lighting business anytime soon? Uh, are you, uh, you know, what's, what's the next move for, for Angie? Next, next move is to practice to exiting the lighting. To practice? Work a little less. Okay. Practice, work a little less, not exactly jump out yet, but work at it. So yeah, we're figuring I think, it out. I think if Greg loses you, he's in big trouble, actually, I think. Um, That's good to hear. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'll tell you, one of the things I struggle with is that I don't have a partner that takes care of that. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's yeah. like I have to, I have to sign every single check. And I, I, I know it sounds like, oh, you're a micromanager. Well, I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. I just want to know who's taking the money and how much I'm paying yeah. to who. But um, mm -hmm. so uh, the lessons, 30 years in the lighting business, what do you got for the nail oh, members? Nailed members. Um, I typically don't count a sale until we've been paid. I know we like to talk about our sales every month and what the numbers are. In the back of my mind, I'm always saying, but who paid and who didn't. Mm. Um, so watch your, watch your receivables, uh, watch bad inventory, watch returns, jobs that went wrong. what we do with the product? You know, um, so basically watch the details. You got to make the sale first. You know, we're a sales or organization, no doubt. So number one, make the sale. Number two, make it right and then get paid for it. Pretty simple. That's true. Pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. And be good yeah, to your without... be good to your be good to your people. Be good to your people. Take staff. Be good to your people. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I want to be good to them. Sometimes they piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess sometimes I piss them off too. Greg, any final thoughts? Uh no, you know, I think it's just something that Premier Lighting is celebrating thirtieth year and there's a reason for it. And you can see Angie's uh, you know been behind it the whole time and and uh, has done the right thing in lighting, and, and that's what you know we're all about. And I think a lot of the people that are still in lighting, that's what they're about, and they should be about, is not getting a sale now, but thinking about what's best for the customer in the long run too. You know, I, we we talk about a lot on the shows. A lot of times, it's it's quick. It's like, oh God, I got to go sell this and and get out and 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 sell the next one. And yes, you do have to do that, but you also have to think about it as though it was your lighting system. You know, as as though it was your products that you're having in the in the ceiling that you have to manage so making sure you, you think that through and do right by the customer now because you know i've had it 15 angie's at a 30 mike you're in that same a little longer and kind of in between us is i've had many customers order multiple times over the years and then word of mouth spreads from it and then you get a lot of business because you do the right thing 10 years ago and now you get another job five years later it takes time obviously but same idea i think I hope is going to happen with LED is, you know, we've, we've gone in, we've done a lot of it and you look at it and you say, okay, it's done. But, you know, we recently ran a report of um, LED tubes that we installed in 2015, six years ago that were 22 watt. Are there any 22 watt type B LED tubes anymore? Not really. I mean, everything's high lumen ones. You know, There's some high lumen even, ones. Yeah. They're, they're even eight, Maybe but an 18, 18 watt high lumen maybe. is the same as a 22 watt is. So four Watts of savings is not much. But they need to relamp anyways, and it might be time to, to go back into those places. So um, that's it. Just kind of thinking long term versus just short, getting a sale and moving out. Are you worried for the future, Angie, in terms of Premier Lighting? And, and, and you know, the, a lot of the projects are done. A lot of the installs are done. The MRO is kind of dried up a little bit. Are you worried for the future of Premier Lighting? Or are you confident? Uh, I think I go back and forth just like everybody does that's in the industry. Um, some days you wake up thinking, how much longer can we make it? And then the other day you wake up and say, oh, that's a good idea. This is our next thing that's coming along. You know, there's always going to be something new. I just don't know what the time frame is this time. You know? How do you feel about the human-centric circadian play? You think that's a legitimate? You've been in the lighting industry a long time. You've seen a lot of marketing material. You probably remember the the, the cure seasonal affected disorder stuff that came right. out in the late nineties. You, you could you could Absolutely. probably see that ad ad on the wall. Is it next to you, Angie, or somewhere in our office? But it talks about it from like what nineteen fifty, sunshine yeah. lighting or something like that. <laughs> you know, yeah, daylight. It's, yeah, yeah. It's on a different hallway, not in my office, but yes. Um, but what do I think about that? I don't know that I see that as what's coming. Or the next big wave? 
I what think I see? see it more as um, maybe more industry, finding niche markets that haven't been hit yet. Um, you know, I think there's still things out there. Not necessarily um, anything, I don't know if I want to call that a, just a flash of an idea, but I mean, there's a lot out there still. I don't know if I want to say. We just met with someone the other day. I think there's different ideas out there. We just have, haven't have discovered them yet. Greg's doing bowling alleys right now. There's industries out there that, right? <laughs> Crazy. So I'm doing bowling alleys, and look at this. <laughs> oh, this there we from, go. There's our price list of bowling alleys from 2000 and what, five? Five, I think it was. We're back to the yeah. bowling alleys, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I you know what I used to love to do custom price sheets for different industries. I used to exactly. love to do that. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, this is no. our it's price list for your bowling alleys. Yeah, because they probably have black, light, blues, and stuff like that that they need. Right. Yeah. yeah. Show it again, Greg. See, you put their little bowl, their ball at the top. Yeah. <laughs> see, that made them feel so special. Yeah. <laughs> There's some weird products on there: Astroline, Gold Crown, whatever that means, Telescope Lighting. I like no, the miniatures up there, bud. Little miniature. Yeah. <laughs> For those watching, he's, he's holding a white eight and a half by eleven sheet, clearly printed on a color printer. That he had a hundred yeah. of those in his car, stacked in mm -hmm. a pile, and he'd see a bowling alley and he'd drive in and pull it out. Hey, man, I got the bowling alley price list right here, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, man, good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Michael? Where do you think it's going? You know, I, I look at the, you know, I know that the, um, so here's what we know for sure. That if you sleep better, you'll be more alert. You will be, um, you will have, you know, you'll react faster. Okay. Um, and you'll be healthier. We know that. We know that light pollution, screens in your face, you know, whatever those things are that disrupt your sleep, that those things are really bad for you, okay? Which is why, you know, um, casinos shine bright white light in your eyes at a, from the vertical plane, okay? So what's happened with the health effects side is they're saying, well, instead of doing that at midnight um, when you're drunk so that you stay awake and lose your paycheck, why don't we do it at 9 a.m. in the morning or what have you and get people to wake up? And so my issue with all this, while I believe that, you know, that Dr. Mariana Figueroa and Dr. Mark Ray are doing great work and they've proven some things with dementia patients and, and um, you know, also some other areas of, of tuning lighting to cue people to do things that are real and work. Uh, I'm very skeptical. I don't know if skeptical is the right word. I'm maybe cautiously optimistic that you know, we can give people a minor boost with electric light. Um, but I don't think we really even know what the sun is doing. And I don't think you can take a negative outcome and then deploy it someone el somewhere else and get automatically get a positive outcome, right? So if they say, well, you have 2,000 lux or 10,000 lux on a sunny day at noon, um, even when you're wearing a cap, you know, you have this, but that kind of light, I like to compare it to an aquarium. You know, you can't match the seawater outside of a coral reef in an aquarium. You can kind of like mess around with the level of the, you know, whatever the baseness or the acidicness of the water and the salt level and all that, but it's never going to be the ocean. And I think it's the same thing with electric light. I, I don't even think we really know what electric light is. And, and how it affects us. And I know that, you know, there's something to do with near infrared. So long story short, um, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I think that all the benefits come from darkness, from better sleep. Yeah. And so if, you know, I think that the lighting industry, it to be 100% what I think, I think the lighting industry needs to become the lighting and darkness industry. And that we have to consider that as important as electric light is, so is uh, darkness. And so being able to provide people with natural darkness, 
whether that's to see the stars in case for the you know the International Dark Sky Association to protect wildlife and to help humans improve their sleep and calm down and reduce their frantic franticness that we've created with cell phones and all that. I think if the lighting industry can help with that, we will increase the there it's like a negative number right now by not doing that we're missing the best part about controls like the most obvious use of controls is in the darkness play so i think if the lighting industry from has full alignment with the fact that the number one pursuit of outdoor lighting is to restore natural darkness if that becomes the pursuit of the lighting industry, there is absolutely growth available to us beyond our wildest dreams. But it's a paradigm shift and people have to change the way they think about it. And so for me, the, 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 the only obvious thing we can do to improve human health, improve the health of wildlife and improve our communities and restore our sense of awe when we see beautiful starry skies in the middle of Minneapolis or Toronto, when that happens, that's the only thing that we know how to do that will help human health 100% without any, any negatives, um, unless you consider that there's less safety or whatever. But I don't buy that. I think we can do right. lighting systems that provide that. So long answer, I think that providing darkness and officially stating that this is the lighting and darkness industry, that will create unbelievable growth for the industry. That's my belief. And I, and I think that is the only human health effect that the lighting industry should legitimately pursue everything else being secondary. So that would be my take on it. Short story long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good to hear. Yeah. All right. So congratulations to, to you, Angie, for 30 Thank years in much. the business and Premier Lighting yeah. and Greg as well. Your 30th anniversary. Yeah. Is there a big party? Uh, not yet. No. Got to get through this week and then maybe we'll start talking <laughs> talking party someday yeah yeah we'll someday. Figure something out. Yep. well yep. angie thank you for being a guest i know we've tried to get you on a couple times but you couldn't get away on your 30th anniversary and all uh, right congratulations you got me well thank you it's been good it's been great bye for now all right folks if you made it to the end you got to go to k-e-y-s-t-o-n-e-t-e-c-h.com for the easy folks at keystonetech.com greg eric that's right. They made easy. They do it. As we said at the beginning, they, they come up with the right product that you need to be able to sell more. And that's what it's all about in lighting, right? Is, is finding what needs are, matching them, and having availability, good pricing, good service to back it. And Keystone does it all. KeystoneTech.com. Keep it easy. And of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Go to NAILD.org. Baby, that's right. Get associated. Get educated. Conferences in November. Co convention, sorry, is in November. Check it out. We'll be sending you guys, all you listeners, all you nailed members out there, links to how you can show up. Thanks for listening.